Okay, um, this is what is data science, take three. So I'd like to talk about the goal of this course. Uh, what is data science? We hear the term used a lot, but what does it actually mean? So um, it's a combination of two words, data, which most of us understand, and then science, which is not completely clear what it means. Okay, so let me uh, give you my take on that. So um, we're surrounded by data. Data is collected by uh, on, on pads, uh, in gas stations, um, using laptops, in industry, uh, temperature is, is gauged, and then um, the wireless world around us is giving us data all the time. All of this data is sent to some kind of central computers, and using that data, what we want to do is data analysis. So that is basically data collection and analysis. But what is data science? So data science, um, I would say, is rational decision-making, okay? So uh, how do we make decisions using data in a rational way that is useful and profitable? So I would divide it into two kinds of decisions, big decisions and small decisions. What are big decisions? So one decision might be, um, is the water in a particular city uh, safe or unsafe to drink? Okay, so that's a decision that is important because we would have to do something if the water is unsafe. Um, another question that is now very relevant is, uh, will increasing the federal interest rate by 75 points, let's say, curb inflation in the United States? Okay, so that's a prediction that is super important to the whole economy, and um, the Federal Reserve people have to decide how to do that, or how much to increase the, the rate at this point. Um, even more global decision is about moving away from fossil fuel. So we want to say, will increasing prices of uh, gas to $8 a gallon Will that reduce global warming by one degree? Okay, so that's a benefit of doing that and then the cost of doing that. So we would like to know what is the expected um, gain from, from doing such a thing. So these are all very big decisions involving a lot of people and involving big institutions. And uh, making those decisions is based on making um, on testing hypotheses and verifying that this is, to the best we know, the true, um, the true state of the world, and that is what we um, predict will happen based on this. Then there are many small decisions that um, we are surrounded by every day, mostly on the web. Um, so, for instance, which ad are you likely to click on? That is an important thing for a company like Google to basically identify the ad that you are the most likely to click on so that they can have an ad revenue. Um, a similar one is for Netflix. What uh, movie should Netflix uh, recommend to you as the next movie? And a slightly bigger one, more important, would be um, which loan applications should the, the a particular bank grant? Okay, so what, what is the, um, what is of the many applications that they get, which ones should, should they grant? So that is a bigger uh, decision, but it affects maybe one, or a fam one person or a family. Okay, so you see there's gradations of the different kinds of decisions, where the big decisions are really decisions that would be made by some kind of set of people that deliberate on the issue, and the second set of decisions is more decisions that can be automated uh, and can be made 
um, uh, online without user, without human intervention. So let's look at the particular real example of this, uh, of this kind of uh, situation. So we're going to talk about the uh, highway traffic in California. And there is uh, Caltrans, which is the organization that basically is charged with um, deciding, uh, with collecting data and making decisions about how to improve the, um, the uh, transportation in, in the United States or in California. And this is basically the problem that they're trying to solve, right? So we've all been there, traffic jams, you can be stuck there for hours. They take a lot of um, um, time out of the day for people, and also they, it costs a lot of um, gas uh, to, to, um, to have these cars basically idling uh, on the freeway. So how do we get data so that we can make decisions about this? So the way that Caltrans does it is that there are these um, there are these loops uh, on the highway, here pairs of loops, and these uh, basically can measure um, when a car goes over them, it can measure how long the car is there and how many cars pass, let's say, per minute. Okay, so this is um, a more of a schematic of how this is working, collecting the data, then sending it to a computer, and all of these computers through the internet, um, collect the data into a central place. So what we have for each passing, for each, um, for each uh, detector, we have the flow, so the number of cars per unit time, and then we have the occupancy. So what fraction of the time is a car in a per above a particular loop? Okay, and there are many such detectors. There are about 45,000 of them in California. And each one of these detectors generates a data packet that says what happened during that half a minute every 30 seconds. Okay, so a lot of data that gets collected together, and um, then we want to do a data science on that data. So here comes the science part. Okay, so there is actually a science of, uh, of uh, traffic flow. And this science gives us a model of how does traffic go on a highway. And this is the basic graph here. Okay, so we have the density of the cars or um, how many cars per mile there are. And then here is the speed that the cars uh, move at. Okay, so the, the, actually the number of cars per minute that pass the detector. Okay, so we want a lot of cars to pass a detector, that would be ideal uh, flow. And so what we have is that there is this relationship between the density and the flow. Okay, so if we have pretty empty highway, then um, cars can move freely very, very fast. Um, and that's, the, that's this beginning part. And then as there are more and more cars, the cars have to go slower, and at some point you reach a peak, okay? So this is the rate at which if cars go at this rate, then um, you get the maximum number of cars per minute, okay? So um, you, if you go beyond that, beyond that um, uh, density, if you have the cars closer together, they start to go significantly slower, and so you have less flow. Right, you basically, uh, the cars are overall moving, moving uh, along less, and so, so you're getting worse and worse flow until you hit the traffic jam, where basically cars are standstill and, um, and, 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 are, and basically are not moving, and uh, everybody is frustrated. So, so this is the theory of it, and of course the practice doesn't look exactly like the theory, or the model, the practice looks something like this. Okay, so here we have um, one set of measurements, and then we, here we have another set of measurements. So it is 
somewhat reminiscent of here. We have the peak around here. And, um, and once we have this um, representation, we can start to do some kind of rational decisions, like how many cars would, um, how many, what density of cars can this highway withstand? Beyond that, it will start to be anti, um, non-productive, right? So we want to basically be as much as possible here, but without getting into here, right? And definitely, we don't want to get down all the way down here. So. Data science, at its heart, is taking the science, uh, what people know about a particular um, uh, process or phenomenon, and we take data that we measured, and we basically uh, combine the data to basically tell us what, wh whether the data fits the model, and what are the parameters of the model that would make this fit good. And then, once we have those parameters, we can go and start to make decisions. OK, so what decisions are we going to try to make? Again, the big decisions are things like what kind of changes we need to make to a highway. So maybe we kind of change a particular place to have, um, to have a, a different kind of intersection. Or we might just make um, a smaller change, which is to change the distribution of the lanes. Right? So maybe there will be more lanes in one direction and fewer lanes in another direction. And so each one of these has a, a cost. If it's a big change like this, it's probably in the many millions of dollars. If it's um, uh, just, just a change of lanes, it's probably just using some paint, it might be much, much cheaper. And the question is, what would be more effective? right? And so we can use the model that we measured to say, oh, you know, Actually, this little change that doesn't cost a lot um, we will actually be um, quite beneficial. And this change is very expensive and will not really gain us a lot of uh, improvement in the traffic flow. So these are the big decisions. Millions of dollars are involved. Small decisions are something like this. You've probably all experienced uh, this when you get on the highway. There is this, um, there is this uh, light that tells you that you have to wait until it's green, and then you go. Okay? And why is that important for the flow? Again, because of what I said, that if there are too many cars at the same place in the highway, basically if the density is too high, then everybody suffers. So it's better to block people from getting on the highway when you get on, and then um, the traffic can flow. Now, of course, here the traffic is pretty busy, so you really need to do that. But if the traffic is actually pretty empty, so there's no very few cars, maybe two in the morning, then um, you don't need to do that, right? So this is many small decisions that are made moment to moment to decide how much does a car have to wait before, um, before it, it goes, or how many cars do, should we let to go on the highway per minute. Okay, So this is the kind of small decisions that we would basically do based on the same kind of models. So to start talking about models, one of the basic things that you would want to do is you just want to know what is the traffic on average and how much it varies from average. So how much is the standard deviation? So this is this plot here. This is the average. And this is minus one standard deviation and plus one standard deviation. So you see that there's a lot of variation. But the overall shape is, makes sense that early in the morning, there's very little traffic. Then it builds up until like 8 in the morning. And then this traffic goes, uh, becomes, becomes uh, generally higher until um, 6 PM. And then it goes, it goes down. So this is the average. However, any individual place is not likely to be quite like the average, right? Because there are different profiles of the, of the traffic. So how do we get to understand those profiles? So that's a method called principal component analysis, which we will go over. Um, and basically what this, this tells you 
is it tells you what are the essentially the profiles that are prevalent in the way that the traffic flows. And uh, so what we have here is that blue line here is basically um, the AM traffic jam. And what we have here is we have the PM traffic jam. Okay? And um, if you just think about it for a minute, it makes a lot of sense because some directions of the highway are busy in the morning, some directions are busy in the afternoon. This might not be the case always. Some places have traffic jams both in the morning and in the afternoon, but it's quite typical for uh, highways in California. Okay, so I showed you an example of what it is, what is data science, and how you make big and small decisions based on it. So what are the ingredients of data science that uh, um, I would like to put in your mind? First one is math. So in order to build these models and relate these models to data, you need some solid foundation in math, mostly linear algebra, probability, and statistics. Then you need to learn about machine learning algorithms. So there are algorithms that um, are based on this probability and statistics. Um, and let you basically take data and build flexible models of this data. Then all of that becomes, at the end, software development, right? If you want to, to actually do it at scale, um, and maybe packages that are ready are not good enough for your specific problem, you need to essentially know how to write software and how to develop a program, uh, software that that, that would be um, useful for um, many people. And then there is this whole other area, which is domain knowledge. So as I said, um, in the highway case, there is the science of traffic flow. OK, so that is, um, this is a well-established science that, that really understands how the main parameters of traffic behave. So because it is so specific to individual things, it is kind of hard to really teach it in any individual course, right? So it's not so much something that you would learn here. You will get some examples. It is more something that when you get employed as a data scientist, you will learn how the, this particular, the science of that particular type of uh, of, uh, of, of company or institution. So there's various different, uh, different uh, domains, and it really takes a long time to acquire the knowledge of a particular domain in depth, right? So if you really want to be an independent um, um, data analysis person or data science person, you need to devote to that area a significant amount of time. And so we will only touch on particular small examples like this traffic and like the weather and things like that. So, um, so that's more or less um, what um, I would say is, is data science. This is the introduction to what you're going to do. And next time, uh, we're going to basically start digging into the details. Okay, so I'll see you next time.